In my short time interviewing entrepreneurs, a common theme has emerged. Never give up. It's a given. But what if there's an it factor in the world of business ownership? Something intangible that cannot be taught. What if so many first-time businesses fail simply because the owners don't have it? I recently traveled to Gross Point Farm to chat with Daryl Mack, entrepreneur and franchisee of Papa Romano's and Mr. Pita, in hopes of finding out exactly what it is. I didn't just have uh, like a passion for pizza. Right. It was I started because when I switched to uh, finance, I just was looking at different investments. I started trading. Right. This is while I was still in college. You know, I got a Scott Trade account and right. just invested. Okay. Um, and then I had a friend. His his cousin owned a different pizza franchise. And he had a, a large number of them. And my friend end up being a partner with him at one and needed some working capital. So I loaned my friend uh, some money. He ended up not being able to pay me back. But I made his cousin, who was the franchisee, sign a promissory note. So that's how me and him began, you know, started a partnership. And uh, that was the beginning of the pizza business. So me and him, we had that we had a, a, a business relationship where you know anytime he needed capital. In, in this business, you all you, you always have expenses, and sometimes if the sales aren't there, your cash flow may be low. Right. So I was loaning him money like that, and then when he got the cash back, he would repay me. Right. Um, but then it got to a point with him where he was unable to pay me. Right. So. Um, but he still was in a bind, so he was, you know, he came to me one day, he needed money. But I had reached my point with him where I said, you know, I, right. it, you know, I, I can't keep giving you money. You can't, you know, it's just like if somebody goes to it. If you got bad credit, the bank isn't going to loan you any more money. So he then proposed mm -hmm. that I become a partner in one of his locations. So instead of me just loaning him money, I did have equity in a certain uh, restaurant. So that was how I, I became a partner. I wasn't the franchisee. I was just, I was an operating partner. So I was in there every day, right. which is how I learned the business, you know, right. making food and all of that. Um, that was somewhat short-lived because about 10 months after being there, that restaurant got hit by a storm. Oh, wow. And so he had good insurance. <laughs> so, um, my next um, one. so the, the store was completely damaged because the roof got ripped off, you know, so it, it was uh, water damage. So he got a big check, you know, I received some of it because, you know, I gave him money. But he decided, yeah, he decided not to rebuild that store. Right. Um, but we still, we kept a partnership on that, you know, because he had, at that time, maybe he had four other restaurants, so we continue with the original relationship where, you know, loaning him money or helping him out in certain, um, we, we still kind of, I don't know, we, some people, you know, it, it just, the relationship kind of, it just went back to the same thing, where I would loan him money, where right. he'd make a few payments. Kind of as yeah, things. yeah, so, and then, I kind of stepped away from pizza until I found this. That was about seven years ago.
in college, it was probably the last time I actually had a job working for somebody. But when I was throughout college, I took care of mentally disabled people, like in group homes. So I, I did that for about six years. And then um, before I graduated, I was a partner in that, the last pizza place before I even graduated college. So, you know, when I finished, I was just, I just hit the ground running on my own. Yeah. Being cheap, and right, I, right. I mean, <laughs> really, like all, anybody who knows me, they, they say I'm the cheapest person probably that they know. Okay. But I mean, it really, in, in business, a lot of people, you know, say it's easier to use other people's money, you know. Right. And I'm sure at some point I will start borrowing from people to right. expand. But starting out, I was doing everything was just using my own money. But just to have your own money, I always live below my means. That's right. You know, and, you know I, I have friends, while they going out buying Gucci belts, they were laughing at me from going to buy my belt at Target. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Keep I your mean, hands up. Yeah. yeah. So I just cheap, save. Just brief, so not going in depth. Yeah, I not, say, not, I'm I've been sure. I've been done with that for a while, but oh, so, right. I mean, just I mean, trading is just everybody hear about the stock market, right? You right. know, so trading is simply you just if it's a publicly traded company, you know, they sell shares of their stock, and then to make money, somebody like me would just go and buy shares. The point is to buy low and sell high. So, and the, luckily for me. When I switched my major from electrical engineering to finance, that's when I really wanted to start learning about it. Right. It was right when the market was crashing. Right. So that's when you buy, right? yeah. Okay. So you know everybody was panicking, everything was low. But to me, I mean, I didn't know what was good from what was bad. All I was seeing was, I mean, there was stuff, and I was putting a lot of stuff in financials. So you got to think at the time during the housing. Uh, you know, the market crash, right. the banks, all the banks were yeah. down. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Their price for their stock was low. You know, Chase, uh, Morgan Stanley, all those financials were low because we were in the recession. Right. So I just was just buying up every day. I'm going to school in the computer lab. Right. And I'm, I'm online buying stocks. Wow. Now, and, and if you don't have the answer if you, want, if you don't know, but like, was this like student loan money or was it yeah, and, and just saving? And saving. But okay. that that was another thing with yeah. I took out student loans to, um, to get through school. Right, right. And of course, like everybody, we take out more than we need. So I'm you know, I'm living but at the same time I have a job. So my job was paying for yeah. my apartment, yeah. But so the student refund money that I was having, instead of going to blow it like a lot of people, I'm putting it in CDs at the bank and okay. opening up Emma Jones accounts and Scott uh, Trade. Yeah. Okay. So even though yeah, I'm getting charged a certain percentage, you know, from the student loans, you know, that's right. I'm making more than that. Uh, and then you'll be able to pay them back. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Okay. Um, I still got student loans. Though. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> she probably died. I'm, I'm, you know. Like a car note, not paying the students. I mean, I don't know. I, if, if if I'm experiencing any setbacks due to my race, I mean, it's not known to me. But you know what I'm saying? I'm, if, I'm sure there might be some customers that have come and noticed the change. Okay. You know, right. uh, not even just me, but. You know, I mean, you know, because some of them come in here because they had the same owner for the past seven years. Right. So when they see a chain, you know, a lot of customers ask, oh, is there a new owner, blah, 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 you know, or even speaking to me, you know, initially a lot of customers, they may just think I'm an employee until we have a conversation. And I say, oh, yeah, I'm the new owner. Right. You know, so, I mean, I'm sure there may be some, I mean, I mean we're in America, right, racism still is alive. So um, there might be some customers who don't like the fact that it's black on, you know. But I mean, I, I'm not aware of you know any any issue. Just 
do to my race at the moment. Right.